So if you have a rainwater harvesting tank, or maybe it's just a backup water storage tank and you've got a pump and a filter system like this, or maybe it's not exactly the same as this, but it is something similar. And every now and again, you're battling with low pressure or low water flow problems. And you're wondering to yourself, I wonder if it is the pump that is giving problems or if it is the filters that are getting blocked. And if it is the filters, which one of the filters is it? Well, in today's video, I'm gonna show you a small and easy addition you can make to your system. And luckily enough, it's also relatively cheap so that at a glance, you can see where the problem lies in your system. So here's the problem. Open the tap fully and there is barely enough flow and pressure for one tap. Go ahead and open a second tap flush a toilet, maybe take a shower, and everything pretty much disappears. Now you may also notice that your pump turns off and then it turns on again, and it'll continue in the cycle while the tap is open. So to identify where the problem is, I went ahead and installed these three pressure gauges into the system. And this is something that you can also do at home. Previously, this was the system, and you can see that there are no pressure gauges installed. Now, the system does work perfectly well just like this, but when things start blocking up and going wrong, you can't really see where the problem is. Now, if you wanna see how to install these pressure gauges, there is a separate video, which I will leave a link to to in the description and it should also pop up at the end of this video. To give you some clarity on how the water flows through the system, it flows through the pump and controller, then up to a pair of sediment filters, then down to a UV sterilizer, and then up to a pair of carbon filters, and then down and into the house. And if you wanna know more about why it flows like this and how I installed it, I'll leave a link to that video in the description. So the first pressure gauge is connected to the outlet of the pump, and it's currently holding around four bars of pressure. It's about 58 PSI. The second pressure gauge is connected to the outlet of the sediment filters, and the third pressure gauge is connected to the outlet of the carbon filters. And it shows a final outlet pressure that goes into the house. And both of these you can see are at around about four bars or again 58 PSI. So if I open up the tap, the pump turns on and we can see that the pressure at the outlet side of the pump is around 3.7 bars. And for only one tap being open, this looks pretty good. Then, if we look at the next two gauges at the outlet of the sediment filters and at the outlet of the carbon filters, things are not looking so great here. So after the sediment filter, the pressure drops to about 0.5 bars. And after the carbon filter, the pressure drops to about 0.3 bars. So you can see there is quite a substantial pressure drop across the sediment filters. So are these sediment filters blocked and are they causing the problem? Well, let's find out. So to change the filters, I'll first shut off the water supply to the filters, and then I'm gonna go ahead and release the pressure across the filters. Now, if you don't do this, the filter housings are really difficult to open. Once that's done, I'll also shut off the outlet supply valve just to prevent any potential backflow of water from the house. Especially if you've got a double story house, it can be a little bit irritating when you're trying to open and work on these filters. And then as a last check, I'll press the bleed valve on top of the filter just to make absolutely sure that all the pressure is gone. Now you'll see that these filters are pretty easy to open, but that is definitely not always the case. Sometimes they can be really, really stuck. And if your filters are stuck, I do have another tips and tricks video about how to open stuck water filters and also how to prevent them from getting stuck in the future. And I'll leave a link to that video in the description. Yep, I'm sure you will agree, this first filter looks like it is properly blocked up. And the second filter also looks like it has seen way better days. Now before installing the new filters, I'm gonna go ahead and apply some food grade silicon grease to the O-rings. And this helps to lubricate the O-rings and it also makes it a little bit easier to open the housings the next time the filter change comes around. And that is just one of the many tips and tricks that I share in the video that I just mentioned. 
I'm gonna install a 20 micron sediment filter as the first stage of filtration, and then a one micron sediment filter as the second stage of filtration before the water goes into our UV sterilizer. So with the new filter installed, I'll partially open the supply valve and I'll bleed all of the air out of the system. Now this video isn't a step-by-step -step guide on how to change your filters, but if you want to know more about that, I also have another video pretty much telling you everything that you need to know about changing filters and I'll also leave a link to that video in the description. So has this fixed the problem? Well, if we fully open the tap, you can see the pump outlet pressure is at 2.6 bars. And the pressure at the outlet of the sediment filters is 2.5 bars. So that's a 0.1 bar drop across the sediment filters. And remember previously there was a 3.2 bar drop across the sediment filters. And the pressure at the outlet of the carbon filters is 1.8 bars. So that is a 0.7 bar drop across the carbon filters. So now we can see that the carbon filters are being the most restrictive. And if we partially close the tap, this is what the pressure gauges indicate. If you're finding the video useful so far, please give it a like and leave us a comment. It is always, always great to hear from you. Tell us about your rainwater harvesting and filtration system. And maybe you're willing to share some of the tips and tricks that you've learned over time. And you never know these may end up helping somebody else. So what are all of these pressure gauges actually telling us? We can see that there's good pressure coming out of our pressure pump. So there's no problems here. We can also see that there is still very good pressure coming out on the outlet side of our sediment filters. So again, there is no problem here after we've replaced the filter elements. However, you can see on the outlet side of our um, carbon filters, there is about a 0 0.8 bar drop which is about 11.6 psi so potentially those filters need to be replaced however i have tested this with multiple taps open and we're still getting a very good uh, pressure and a flow sufficient for our use so what i'm going to do is i'm going to leave those filters alone those filters were replaced about six months ago and i'm going to see if they can make it all the way to one year and if they do, I will definitely replace them at one year. So in summary, if you see a good outlet pressure from the pump, but you see a low outlet pressure after the sediment filters, then the sediment filters are the problem. If you see a good outlet pressure from the pump and you see a good outlet pressure on the outlet of the sediment filters, but you move further down the line and you see a low pressure on the outlet of the carbon filters, then the carbon filters are the problem and they likely need to be replaced. However, if you see a low pressure on the outlet side of the carbon filters and you also see a low pressure on the outlet side of our sediment filters and you see a low pressure on the outlet side of the pump, that means the pump is likely worn out or maybe there is some blockage that supplies water to the pump or maybe uh, it's just that your water tank level uh, or the, the water in the tank is very low and the pump is battling to draw water and it's not able to run up to full pressure. Either way, at a glance we can see that it is quite easy to see where in the system the problem is occurring if we've got a couple of water pressure gauges installed. Now low pressure is not necessarily the only reason that filters need to be changed. There are a couple of other reasons like if your water is bad smelling or bad tasting or maybe it just looks dirty or it could be the fact that some filters have a service life and it's now reached the end of its service life. Either way, unlike today's video where the filters were relatively easy to change, this doesn't always go smoothly. Sometimes the filter housings get really stuck and if you want to learn more about how to deal with stuck water filters, I've got a whole lot of tips and tricks when it comes to changing these water filters and I think you're going to find that useful. You can go ahead and watch it in this video right here and if you want to know more about how to install these pressure gauges that we talked about in this video you can go ahead and watch this video right here and I will hopefully see you there. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next time. Cheers.